Welcome back. Last time we looked at how to set up your first schematics for the inverter and the test bench. And in this video, we're going to bring those schematics to life by running our first simulations. It's important to note that Cadence supports multiple simulator front ends, which we can find here under the launch menu. Now in this video, we're just going to stick to the ADE L front end, which is the easiest one to learn. Now, before we can set up the simulation that we're going to run, we first need to tell ADEL how the transistors in our circuit behave. And we do that with files from our PDK. These are also called the model libraries. We can add those with this button here, then clicking on the three dots button, then on the TUE server, you can have a look in your own home folder, then go into Cadence Free PDK 45, and then choosing this models link, which will bring you to the correct folder automatically. Now you'll find three different model types in here, FF, nominal, and SS. And this refers to fast, fast, nominal, and slow, slow for the NMOS and PMOS transistors respectively. What this allows you to do is to test if your circuit behaves like you would want it to behave, even under very extreme variability. So for fast transistors and for slow transistors. We call that corner analysis. But in this case, we're not really going to look at that. We're just going to look at the basic behavior of our inverter. So we'll just select the nominal file. Choose open, then click on OK, and the model libraries have been set up. The next thing that we need to do is telling ADEL what things we are going to measure, which we also call outputs of the simulation. We can set those up with this button here on the side, and then we want to select two of these signals from our design itself. So click on from design, and then click on the node at the input and the node at the output, and they should light up accordingly, as you can see here. Now, the nice thing of having the wire labels here is that if we now go back to the setting outputs window, the names of these nodes are automatically given here. But if you choose a node that doesn't have a wire name, so like this VDD node, you get some numbered name, which makes it very hard to distinguish if we have multiple of these nodes. It's important to know as well that if you click on a node, so if you click on a wire, you are measuring a voltage. If you want to measure a current, you do that by clicking on a terminal. So that can, for example, be the input terminal of our inverter, like this. Now, in the setting output window, that will appear as a name that looks like this, with an I at the beginning at a certain node. And you can double check it by clicking on it here, and it should show a little ellipse around it. So that means that you're measuring a current. But in this case, we're not going to measure either of these two values, so just delete them, click on OK. And in the schematic, make sure that you press on Escape, Everything should then lose its highlight here, and that makes sure that if you click on something else in the simulation now, you're not accidentally selecting another output in your simulation. The next thing that we need to do is setting up our simulation type. Now, we can do that by clicking on this button here, which is called Choose Analyses, and that will give us a plethora of simulation types to choose from. In this video, we're just going to stick to a very simple one of these the DC simulation. In a DC simulation, we're looking at the steady state behavior of our circuit. On top of that, in a DC simulation, all transient signal sources are going to just output a DC voltage. So, for example, the sinusoidal wave generator will now output a 600 millivolts DC voltage, but the sine wave itself will not be output. It's just a DC voltage supply now. We can check out the steady state behavior by clicking on this checkbox, save DC operating point, and then choosing OK. And with that set up, we can now finally run our first simulation. We do that by clicking on this green play button. If everything worked correctly, you should see a log window open up here. If anything goes wrong in your simulation, you will often see the errors appear over here but it seems like our simulation ran correctly. Now you may notice that even though the simulation has completed and the log window confirms that nothing has gone wrong, we don't see anything happening on screen. We don't see the results. And that's because Cadence is computing the steady state. None of the circuit signals have any dependence on time. 
so it can't, for example, plot a signal at the input against time. Now to show the DC operating point in our schematic, we can go to Results, Annotate, and then click on one of these three options. For example, let's choose nosed voltages here, which indeed shows that we have an output voltage of 179.5 millivolts at the output when there is an input voltage of 600 millivolts. Now to measure the internal voltages of this inverter, we have to descend into this block. We do that by right-clicking on it and then choosing Descend Read, but we can also press X on our keyboard. Click on OK. And now we indeed see the DC voltages at all terminals in our inverter itself. Now we can go one step further though. To show all of the model parameters of one of these transistors, you can go to Results, Print, and then choose Model Parameters. Now you might not see anything appear, but we indeed have this small window pop up, which is called the results display window. If we now choose a component that has a SPICE model, like this PMOS transistor, we should see many values pop up over here. Now many of these parameters you might not need to use, but some of them can be quite useful. Things like the parameters that start in C typically refer to capacitances of the model. So you can at least make a check of the order of magnitude of the parasitics of this transistor. So that's the DC operating point measurements. How about doing something that's a bit more exciting though, like finding the DC input to output transfer function of this inverter. Now to do that, we need a little bit more setup. First, let's go back to our test bench. We can do that by right clicking and choosing return. To get the DC input to output transfer of this inverter, we'll have to sweep this input voltage from a low value to a high value. But if we look at the properties of this source, we'll indeed see that it is a constant value right now. Now, if we want to do a sweep, this will need to be variable. We need to be able to change it in our simulation. So we're going to replace it by a variable name. Let's call it VIN, then click on OK, and then make sure that before we move on to our simulation, we run a check and save. What that does is it'll update the netlist so our simulation can work with this new voltage source that we've defined. To get access to our design variable, we can go to this left-hand side here of the ADEL window, right-click and then use copy from cell view. We now see the VIN variable appear. Let's give it a default value of 600 millivolts. Now in our DC simulation setup, we do have to change some parameters. We are now going to sweep a variable, in this case a design variable, specifically V in, and we're going to run that sweep from 0 to 1.2 volts, so from ground to the supply voltage. And let's make it a linear sweep of 1001 steps. Click on OK. Since we're going to sweep the input voltage, we don't really need to plot that one, but the output voltage does have to be plotted, so make sure that this one is checked and this one isn't. Now we can run the simulation with the green button again. And after a while, you should see a plot like this appear. And we can now indeed see the basic inverter behavior. For a low input voltage on the left-hand side of the curve, we get a high output voltage. And for a high input voltage, we get a low output voltage. And that already wraps up the topics for this video. Next time, we're going to discuss two additional simulation types the AC and transient simulations. See you then.